I think 100 or so non is appropriate. We're now ready to classify the images. Let's classify the two trained and also give it 10 random ones. Gemiden is currently building the training data and the machine learning classifiers. It is now complete and is currently classifying the two images plus the 10 random ones. This demo is being run on a quad-core AMD 2.6 GHz with 8 GB RAM running on Windows XP64. Gemiden was designed with multi-threading in mind. With four cores, it will identify four images simultaneously. This is why we constantly observe the images switching back and forth as the identification moves in real time from the top to the bottom. The pixels that things belong to a cancer nuclei will be colored by our display color, the neon green. Seems to take about 34 seconds to complete each image, so there'll, so there'll be about another minute or so left. Let's go over the classification parameters. The accuracy level refers to Gemident internals about the machine learning classifier. For those interested, Gemident employs random forests, and the accuracy level is the number of decision trees grown inside the forest. The number of CPUs is defaulted to the number of cores the operating system detects. One may wish to use fewer if other applications are demanding. The pixel skip, which is here, uh, which is also zero, tells Gemident to classify every single pixel, not skipping any. The phenotypes are large. You may get an accurate analysis by skipping every other pixel, pixel skip of one, or every two pixels, pixel skip of two. This depends on your application. All this information is in the easily accessible manual. The Find Centers button will do blob analysis to try and locate the centers of the cancer nuclei. This feature will be demonstrated shortly. Let's wait for the identification to complete. It is now done. Of course, Gemident made mistakes. So let's return to training and retrain over those mistakes. Let's begin with the initially trained images. Gemident gives us these handy sliders that control the opacity of the classified pixels. We can also turn the visibility of the training points on and off. Notice the regions of false positives. Let's retrain over them with the non. You can also retrain over false negatives with the Kansen phenotype. Now we will boost the training set by looking over those 10 random images. Locating mistake in training will automatically add the image to the training set.
See how the image popped up down here on the, on the thumbnail pane? Let's go through them correcting the errors. It's now time to reclassify. This time we'll allow Gemi then to post process and find the centers as well. To save time, let's classify only those trains. Notice how gem identification takes a toll on the computer itself. The identification is done, it will now try to locate the centrets. It will then give us a count and a false negative rate. That's pretty good. To make the identification even more solid, let's return to phenotype training. Here are some errors. You get the idea. A good, a good classification may take many cycles of training, classifying, retraining, reclassifying. It all depends on the application and the accuracy desired. When confident, a full classification of all images in a second take place. In the next demo, we will show another histological sample with a full classification for many phenotypes already completed. We'll then dive into gem-dense analysis features.